This is Andy Poroff, Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm drawn by Ryland Charlton over Zoom. Ryland, as always, firstly, how's things going? How's life? Yeah, life's all good, thank you. Um, pushing on. Uh, yeah, all good. How are you? I'm good, mate. It's been a while, as I said, since you know, we've last had a chance to catch up. Uh, we haven't spoken since pre-boxer tournaments. So just as a, a starting point, Ryland, uh, successful, obviously, up until the point of the final for yourself. Just reflect on, on the night, though, for me. Take me back to uh, the tournament itself and how you felt progressing. Uh, yeah, it was good. I really enjoyed it. It's probably the, the most the most fun I've had in this boxing game because um, there's no worrying about how your engine's going to be because it's three rounds, three minutes. It's just absolute flat out, full on fight. And uh, time to get into like your, your boxing, your boxing skill. There is boxing skill in it, I suppose, but it was more just absolute all out fighting. And I really enjoyed it. So yeah, we got to the final. It was, it was close. Um, he did catch me with the more probably eye catching shots. He was accurate. Um, say my work rate is always really high. I thought my work rate was higher, but I thought it was close. It could have gone either way. And yeah, it went to him, unfortunately, but that was still great fun. That format, you must have felt like it just suited you down to the ground because of your style. You very much want to come forward. You want to be the aggressor when you fight. Um, And you also went into the the tournament as a favourite because of your past experiences in the ring. At the beginning of say fight week did you feel like you was the favorite yourself did you feel like everything was just kind of set up for you to be successful well yeah I thought it I thought I kind of was but really I I mean I was looking at the other guys and they aren't they only weren't the favorite because they weren't really known about and they were just like they they weren't in the limelight at all um and I always got to remember that the the win that got me out there got my name out there was against Joe Laws and when he was the favorite then so doesn't matter who the favourite is, you still got to get in there, perform and, and do the job. But I didn't underestimate anyone I got in there with. Um, and they 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 were half decent. Um, but I think it suited my style, definitely. Um, but I did have some, I think I had some hard hard fights kind of thing. And I, I, I'd literally just go all out. So my engine was probably a little bit lower than it could have been. But that was, that was great fun. I really enjoyed it. How did you find trying to not kind of basically let your body body stiffen up in between the fights, Royal? And obviously, you know, when you fight, you have that break in between till the, the semis and then the same with the final. How did you find making sure that you, you know you stayed loose and you stayed ready for the next bout? Um, it was all good, really. We just got in. I just sort of sat down for sat down for five minutes. I don't think I had that long break. I think I had about twenty minutes. I think something like that. But all I needed to do was just literally sit down, catch my breath, get some breathing in. And um, yeah, for about probably about 10 minutes, catch my breath, then get up and just start loosening up again. I really enjoyed it. I feel like all in my training for the run up to that was all to do with like we'd do three rounds, three minutes of really hard sparring. Then I'd sit down and have like a 15 minute break and then we'd go again. So I practiced it all throughout my whole my whole fight camp for that. So yeah, I felt regenerated pretty quickly, yeah. Obviously unsuccessful uh, in the end, um, but you move forward and you look towards what could be next for yourself, Ryland. There's been a couple of names which have kind of surfaced over the last few weeks or so. I'm going to start with one which he's due to fight in the coming week, really. I think it's next Saturday, mm. so it's only eight days away now. Uh, Dalton Smith. Mm. Um, talk to me about that. Obviously, you've seen the... the Reports coming out, you was in talks, you was offered that fight. Can you just kind of elaborate to me as to how far along that had gone? Yeah, well, I mean, the fight got, they offered it to me. I think it was within like 12 days notice, uh, which is not ideal for me. Um, but I thought it's a great fight. It's a great opportunity to get in there, be back on the maximum stage and um, and hopefully to get another upset. But I, it kind of got confirmed. It was, it was good to go. And then they got back and said that, it, it's not a goer so I don't really know whether they went off and found an easier opponent I don't really know but that never really materialised into anything unfortunately um, but yeah it's a bit of a shame because I wouldn't mind giving that one a go I know Dolph looks very good he's a good boxer um, and he needs to I think I feel like he needs a proper test like I was looking at the people who boxed and he's boxed some alright people but I feel like he's boxed a puncher. I don't think he's fought many punches yet. So you've got to test that chin of his and I would have been perfect for it. But yeah, they 
went a different route. I mean, as you said, Junior Ancy, he's obviously he's a very talented uh, young man. A lot of expectation on his shoulders because of his past amateur pedigree as well. Mm -hmm. And he was due to face Akeem Ennis Brown for that vacant British title until Akeem had pulled out. So for yourself, mm -hmm. Royal, and if you would have got that deal over the line, how do you feel you would have handled Dalton and how confident are you that you could have pulled off the upset? I think I definitely could have pulled off the upset. Um, he would, he would no doubt probably outbox me because he's a very good boxer. Um, but I think I'd outfight him. I think I would I'd outpower him. And I might, he may beat me for six rounds, but I'll still be in his face and I'll still be on top of him. And all I've got to do is be good for that one second and land that one shot. And then, yeah, it's game over. So I'll always rate myself knowing that he's a very good opponent. Um, but I'll always, I'll always back myself in that fight. You actually have your past foe, Florian Mark, who training out of the same gym now as Dalton yeah. as well, um, up in, in Sheffield. Who do you think would have been, a, if, if again, you never know down the line if yourself and Dalton do cross paths, who do you think would have been a tougher test for when you look back at what Mark, who produced against you, or do you feel Dalton would be a tougher test? Sorry about that. Alarm's going off. Um, so I would say, I would say, um, Marku is probably the, the bigger test. He he he's he's very I mean Dalton's very good boxing skill wise, but he's not got the weight, he's not got the punching power, I don't think. Like Marku's strong. And um I would have continued going with Marku, but I mean I was beat up, man. I, I, my eye socket was gone, uh, cheekbone was gone. So like I feel like Dalton doesn't carry as much power as Marku. So I'd say. I'd probably do better against Dalton, just maybe just because of the weight size. Because, yeah, I mean, I'm naturally a lightweight, so I would have been even stepping up to fight Dalton. So, but still, it's not well to weight. But yeah, I think me and Dalton would um, be a better fight. Roland, how, how difficult have you found your boxing journey? Obviously, you've had that breakout fight with Joe Laws, and you just had, you know, you mentioned that you're a lightweight. You haven't had the opportunity to build momentum as a lightweight or to fight at that weight in in your in in big fights no. how frustrating has that side to it been for as good as the exposure has been for yourself and for as much as now you are thrown into the mix for potential names i.e like a dalton like an adam azim which we'll come on to is it frustrating that you're not actually able to build your own career at that weight yeah definitely i like i did feel very frustrated to start thinking i want to build up and and um, get some like not easy, easy like easier fights, so I can sort of build my record up, and then we'll go for titles and stuff like that. But what I've started to realise is I'm 30 this year. Um, they want to build up people that are 24 who are young. They've got a long time to sort of build on them and make them into like this, this star kind of thing. I'm going to be the person that's going to be put in to test all of the prospects. And I mean, now I know this, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to be in these big fights. I want to be in these big fights and I want to be make big upsets. I feel like that is going to be my path. It started from the get-go. I fought Joe Laws at World 2 when that's never my way. Upset him, got my name out there and then had a good fight with Marku. I feel like I'm ready to put all of these big fights now. I'm not really fussed about building myself up anymore. I'm just fussed about making some big upsets. We talk about upsets then, let's move on to another name. Uh, Adam Azim, as we mentioned, Roland. What happened with that? Because I remember hearing a lot of talk in the background about you being a potential foe for Adam in the coming months. Mm. Um, it seems, seems to have gone a bit dry now, but can you yeah. just tell me as to where things had got with that? So, yeah, it, there was, it was uh, mentioned after the Boxer series. Um, it did get mentioned uh, a little bit. Um, and I said, yeah, I'm happy to do that. And then it all went quiet. And then it was probably about a month after there was an article in the Sky News that went everywhere saying that we're having a big showdown fight in the summer. And I was thinking nothing's been set in stone. Nothing's really been negotiated. Um, and then uh, Ben Schlong did message me saying, do I want it? I said, yeah, I'm happy. Let's go for it. I'm up for it. Um, I wouldn't mind a warm up fight to start with. Both have a warm up fight, fight on a show together to build up into a bit of a bigger fight. Um, and then it just went quiet again. So, yeah, I don't know whether they're just using my name to hype it up a little bit because obviously he's got a name, but I've also got a name as well. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It seems to have all gone quiet. As soon as I've accepted these fights, they've all, they all don't fancy the pint-sized powerhouse. 
what do you think it is? Do you think that's what it comes down to then, Royal? And as soon as you accept it, do you feel like they're effectively using your name just to build their own? Yeah, I think so. Like, I think they, they've all got the potential to beat me. It's not like I'm that amazing. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to walk through them. Like, they can beat me, but I feel like I'm a big risk. Like, yeah, I've got a name, but I'm not that much of a name, but I could still knock them out. I've got the power to knock them out. So I am a risky, risky choice. So if they can get something easier, I do understand that, but you're going to have to fight someone like me at some point. So you might as well use me as the test. How much of Adam have you looked at, Ron? Obviously, he's only, I think he's 3-0 and now in his career, very early stages. But we've seen he's very, he's got a lot of power. He's very, or it might be 4 no, sorry, with three knockouts. Um, he's very powerful. He's very precise with what he throws. Very talented fighter. And I've heard a lot of good things out of the gym of, as to how well he's been able to hand, handle himself against mm. top-level fighters. How much of him have you watched or studied that you feel you could pick apart if you was to step, step in and face him? I think he is very good. Yeah, he's skillful. I did spar him. We had a little spar. Um, this is a while ago now. And he was decent. We'd, we'd done well together. Um, the power side of it, he could he could dig a little bit, but I didn't feel like it was over the top kind of thing. Weren't, weren't, that, weren't that powerful. There was no pint-sized power. But um, he was, yeah, he was good. I do rate him. But I do feel like everyone can look really good in all this sparring in the gym. And then he's had three fights. I mean, he's still, he's still early stages. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think he's not been tested properly yet. He's, he might be able to be good accuracy. He might be able to be strong. But how's his chin doing? This pro game was all, if you've got no chin, then you're not going anywhere kind of thing. So, and I'm the one to test the chins. Right, Ryan, before I let you go then, can you just kind of look back on that sparring for me? What do you remember about it? Can you just recollect your time in the ring with him? It was good, yeah. We, we I think we did six rounds, I think, six six rounds, something like that. Um, he was very accurate. He was um, he was speedy. There wasn't, I don't, I don't know about the power side of it. I don't think I felt much of that. Um, I feel like, I think this was the end of his, he was end of his camp or something I'd, I was barely even that fit not making excuses but fitness weren't there for me that much we did have we had a good spa like I do I do rate him um but I don't think he's I don't think I mean it'll be too much for him for me to be in there this early on I think I'll be too much for him right Roland we will now leave up there I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your day and obviously get back to the chores you have around your house I yeah. appreciate your time enjoy your weekend and thanks for speaking to me at Boxing Social you too thanks a lot mate